there. But I like you. I like going to talk to the ones that haven't crossed. And the very angry, pissed off spirits, because I like to calm them down and explain stuff to them. It's like, okay, this is why this has happened to you. I can help you get away from this if you want to go to this. Yeah, see what it is? I can't get to uh, Z Talk opened up, and now it's uh, echoing. I can't get into the page to to scroll down and get. Oh, good God! I'm about ready to throw a thousand dollar computer through a wall. I, I can't be calm no more. I'm too much of a perfectionist when it comes to this show. So, and it. Would you open? Oh, good God. People, I do apologize about the echo. I'm trying to take care of it now, but my computer's being an ass. There. Oh, good God. Oh, yeah, my spirits like doing that anyway. Okay, now we have no more echo, hopefully. And now they're trying to say they can't hear you, so this is ridiculous. So i got to go play with, let's see, Sam to make sure. But, yeah, this is the lov lovely things of live radio. Okay, they should be able to hear you now. Can y'all hear me? Are we good? Crossing my fingers. Yeah, hopefully they can hear you now. They could hear me, so they probably hear me cussing. <laughs> Which is good enough for the course. All right, so you think we're good? Okay. Come on. I know, Kim. I know. I hate when people, 500 people tell me that I, they can't hear something. It just aggravates me. Okay. All right. I have somebody right now telling me that he can hear me, so I think that's kind of a good sign if that helps you. That is good. So somebody can. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now, okay. now I always like to ask my fellow mediums, um, when were you aware that you were a medium? Since, like, I can remember anything, actually. I was, um, when I really, really, when I figured it out officially, my dad's mother passed away. And at her funeral, like, I had a little speech thing where I said Psalms 23. And at the funeral... I saw her in the audience, and that's when I think it kind of clicked in my head that, holy cow, I can actually do this. And when she would talk to me about, you know, things she wanted for her funeral specifically or things that, you know, secrets that she knew that I had no business knowing because I was only, like, six years old, um, I would tell my family members, and they were really freaked out, I won't lie. And I think that was, you know, the kickstart of my, my dad's actually a psychic, and he has his own special abilities and his own... You know, so my mom is totally, she did not believe in it back then. And she was very, very afraid of it. So she was like, you know, stop talking about that. That's not real. And I, my dad would, you know, persuade me. He's like, you know what? It's okay. It's all right to be this way. And I think six years old to seven years old, that's when it first started to kickstart my um, future of the mediumship. And yeah. And I'll tell, you, awesome. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. On this show, we do not use the word psychic because people think of Miss Cleo and people that pray on people for money. So that's a bad word on the scare show. 
<laughs> that I will never use that word again. No, My apologies. That's fine. Uh, medium is great. Medium is what we are. Um, now, do you want to get into the indigo children now, or you want to hold off on that one for a little bit? Um, whatever you feel is best for your show. You're the the ringleader right now. So oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just I'm just here. Uh, the man behind the box is all you right now. So okay, then yeah, I would love to. Um, what I specifically am attracted to and very connected to in my life is children, and children are. They're everything I love, and they are so inspirational in their ways. And I think that with this generation that we have, I mean, there's a lot of people like, you know, indigos, adults, uh, star crystal adults, and indigo children, and stuff like that. But what I'm noticing is that probably like 98% of all children being born right now have these indigo auras, and they have such awesome gifts and abilities, and they have just, it's very rare to see so many happening at such a short amount of time. And as me, you know, as a you know twenty year old adult right now, I am very you know connected to these children because I wish I would have had somebody to help me you know grow as like a spiritual teacher and help me figure out what I was doing and experiencing and was it okay and am I going to be okay? So, indigo children, what I have discovered with all you know my research and you know connection to it, I know that there is a good there's there's separate categories for indigo children. So this is how I can categorize it to help people understand better and clearer. You have shadow indigo children, you have fire indigo children, earth indigo children, water indigo children, air indigo children, and rainbow indigo children. And I can explain these perfectly. I'm not trying to make it sound like it's some weird occult thing. It's definitely just a normal way to individualize their different characteristics. The shadow indigo children are more like me. And you, mediums, we deal with the creepy crawlies, the dead people, the kind of the horror movie situation things that we don't know how to deal with. They're the kids that love, you know, zombies and, you know, Halloween and all that kind of stuff, that creepier side of life. They're very interested in it. And then you have, you know, the fire indigo children. And these ones are, like, I call the Olympians. They're the ones that have great strength and great motivation and power. Like, I see these 16-year-olds that are in the Olympics and how they can do what they do. They're the ones that have their special ability, and it's very important. Yep. You have the water indigo children, who are the ones that are obsessed with, like, mermaids and pirate stuff and their past lives, and they're very intuitive and very connected to themselves, and they're very sensitive. They're very, very sensitive. <laughs> and then you have the earth indigo children, who are obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons and King Arthur days and Renaissance and... They're obsessed with Celtic energy, and they love, you know, rocks and crystals, and they have a very, um, very strong sense of self. And then you have the air and go children who are obsessed with, like, Greek mythology and extraterrestrials, and they love all that kind of stuff, and they have a very, um, very big, fluid way of communicating. They're very openly expressing, and they just... They don't know when to shut their mouth, I personally think sometimes. And then you have the rainbow indigo children, which are the complete polar opposite of shadow indigo children. They are the princesses, the I love pink, I love sparkles and unicorns, and I love all, you know, these pretty things. And they have this kind of, like, attachment to very light. They're very, they have a strong sense of who they are, and they believe that, you know, they're very bossy. They feel like they're here for a reason, and they're very frustrated <laughs> at the fact that they're not they're not getting what they want in this life, and people aren't understanding who they are and what they do and what they're here to do as their mission. So you have this very wide spectrum of indigo children with amazing abilities. And what I love, and I'm a huge comic book fan. I don't care if you guys aren't. I was attached to comic books when I was little because I felt like I had something to relate to. And I definitely connect with the X-Men theory because you have these people that, you know, thought that these mutant people were the next step in evolution. Yeah. of humanity and these indigo children are just like that concept they're the next step in humanity so you have like in the 1990s people were coming up with you know the government especially was coming up with all these different ideas like oh you have ADHD oh you're autistic oh you're schizophrenic and you're bipolar and all these different ranges of mental disorders but what's really if you look deeper into it they give these kids all these drugs and all these medications to just medicate them and desensitize them for, from what they truly are and what they truly have to give to each other yeah. so it's like 
I don't agree with any kind of labeling on these children. Even when I was little, people said I was ADHD. The only reason I was so hyperactive was because there's so much stuff going on that y'all couldn't see. Exactly. <laughs> it wasn't ADHD or anything. And you have these kids, like these autistic kids, like society goes and says, oh, they can't, you know, socialize, they can't express themselves. Wrong. Have you seen these kids behind a computer? They're technologically advanced. These yeah. kids know what they're doing. So there's nothing wrong with them. Society is labeling people and thinking that, uh, you know, the normalcy that people want in society is what's going to continue to happen. But it's not going to continue to happen because eventually indigos are going to reign and they're going to yes, be the people that are in these businesses. Would you exactly. notice, did you notice the song I played to begin the show? It's called Free. Yes. Yes. I, that, I, I, that, was, that is my theme song because I've always felt like I was a freak. And it was funny. Listen to you describe Indigo Children. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hit four out of the five of them. And, exactly. But, but I have been told by several spirit guides and, and I've had it come through on EVPs and on box sessions telling me that I was royalty. When it exactly. comes to the spirit world. And I could go to a place that I've never been to before, and spirits will know who I am as soon as I get there. I agree with that, actually, a lot. I believe in past lives. I have a huge, um, this is kind of personal, but I have a huge Atlantean connection like past life. Like, I have visions of it, dreams of it, and I know I have spiritual guides from that time, I'm assuming, that yes, I should help do. me with how I am now. Yes, you do. Uh, actually, you have three of them from Atlantis because I have been told that I was there as well. So, right on. That I have that I have had several people tell me in past life regressions that I have done, and every one of them it comes back to Atlantis or being a soldier. And I have been a soldier, and I was probably a soldier in Atlantis. <laughs> but well, it surprised me. Uh, yeah, it's just and, and it's, and it's, it's funny that you say that with the whole soldier thing for Atlantis because like maybe you can connect with this. My connection with Atlantis was that I was a priestess of the stars. Like I was astronomy and astrology was all my favorite. And I'm not like a huge astrology believer because I believe that it's flawed in what people talk about about predicting your future and stuff. I don't believe that it happens that way. There's a scientific reason for astrology. I think it's to determine your personality traits by how you were born and when you were created. And I, to this life, I realized really quickly that when I was younger, there was a box downstairs in my basement, actually. This huge box. My parents put all my stuff when I was a child. I had stolen Atlantis stuff from the library on how to find it and where to get it. I was so obsessed with finding my home. Yeah. And, and I couldn't figure out for the life of me why nobody believed me and why nobody understood that this is what I wanted to go back to because I believe that the society and the... The place we're in now is so flawed and so wrong. And we are not open-minded as we so-called claim to be. Because we're judging and we're so full of ourselves and we're so full of, you know, in Hollywood, I I love you, Hollywood, but you guys are so great at making people so afraid of things that you have no reason to be afraid of. Sure. I mean, just look at any of the TV shows. That's all exactly. it is. It's a fear factor. They want you mm -hmm. to get you watch because they know if your endorphins are kicked in, you're watching the scary show, you're going to come back and watch another episode of it the next week. That's exactly. all it is. But you know one of the cool things about, because you said you're only 20? Yes. <laughs> wow. You have got gifts that you don't even know you have yet. I'm, I know, and I'm so excited to learn. I guess I think my job is to figure that out. Well, that's one of the things that I do as I help other people like us. Mm -hmm. I help you explain some things that you're going, what in the hell was that? <laughs> and, and just wait, because uh, my God's just telling me now that you're going to very soon, um, you're going to get what I call upgrades. And when it hits you, it hits you like a ton of bricks. You're going, oh, wow, that's a cool upgrade. <laughs> And it, yeah. might be, it might be something simple where you can astral project yourself. And you can go, and I, I call it baby steps. You astral project very little small baby steps. Then you get further and further and further. And then when you get more advanced at it, you actually can go back to Atlantis and actually go see the actual place. 
I tell you. And you're not talking. You're not talking crazy for everyone listening to him right now. I know that you're telling me about this, but I've definitely done it before, and it is the actual projection is one of the. I support it so much for people who want to find out more about themselves and appreciate themselves more because you get to yep. dive into a different reality that uh, opens up a whole new world of ideas and morals and different things that you've never thought you would know about. And Atlantis is definitely a connection for me because I, with all these dreams that I was having when I was little about the destruction, I was there during the destruction of Atlantis. And what I, what my role was, and what I did, and who I saw, and their names, and all these different, you know, information overload things I was learning. I wanted to figure out more about it. So by astral projecting, which my dad taught me, it helped me get a lot of answers for the questions that I was having and what I was frustrated with. And I support astral projection for everyone who wants to learn more about their past lives or connection with their spirit guides to help them further on with their life here on this earth as we are now. Exactly, and I, I recommend that to everyone, is listen to your spirit guides, whether you think that you can hear them or see them or not. They're there. They hear every word you say. They hear every thought you have. They're yeah. there, and they're the ones that put those thoughts in your head or that little voice in your ear or, or give you a message in a dream that you're going, wow, really, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for indigo children especially, you know, back to the indigo thing, Children these days, I feel like for parents especially, if any, if any of your parents listening right now and you have children that, you know, have, you know, imaginary friends or they talk into certain things or you know they have something special about them, what my, my key thing for you is to be extremely, extremely open-minded and do not shut down their ability because you can well, easily do yes. that. You can easily tell your kid. If your kid, your kid's coming up to you and saying, "Mommy, and you see that person," you say, "Oh no, honey, you're just you know, don't talk about the kind of things that doesn't exist." You will make them believe themselves they are crazy because it's not going to make them stop seeing it. They're going to think that they're crazy for seeing it, and then you're going to end up having you know the quote unquote schizophrenic child on your hands or a misunderstood kid who is you know dressed up in black in school because he feels like nobody can relate to him. And that's yep. totally false because I definitely did not do that in high school. <laughs> I was very very open with what I could do, and as much as I was told that I was crazy and people wouldn't believe me. Who are you to go and tell me that? You don't see what I see. And how can you tell me that I'm wrong when I, you know, can go to police officers and help solve crimes? How are you going to go and tell me that I'm the wrong person? And I'm a extremely religious person, and I know that some people who are listening right now who don't know a whole lot about this are very religious. And, you know, they can be Christian, Catholic, whatever your religion is. I support it. But as me, as a religious person, I'm not going to lie, I'm a very diehard Christian. I've had a huge struggle with people saying that, you know, the Bible doesn't talk about mediums and prophets and astrologers and psychic, that bad word. And everybody, you know, just despises them as Christian or religious. And that's false because in the Bible, I found so many Bible verses where God has given people visions, dreams, people to come talk to them. And people who are able to listen to those dreams and listen to those people talking to them obviously have some sort of gift that has been created. So it does not make you anything bad or anything negative to have something that people don't really understand clearly yet. And Hollywood, like I said, is not making it any better for people like us because they love to make you know, money off of it. Oh, of course. And, uh, exactly. But the, the cool thing about it, too, is as I support you being a Christian but in my sense, I am I am a Wiccan, and I'm also Native American. So I, I'm Native American too. That's awesome. Oh yeah, and see that's what makes it so cool because, uh, you know, just the Christians wasn't the only ones that got it, or the, the Jews, or, or the the Native Americans. Every culture has some form of this. Yes. And every culture talks about prophets. Yes. If you look at the Muslim religion, uh, Muhammad was nothing more than a prophet. Yep. And they even and I, call him the Prophet yeah. Muhammad. Mhm. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to like get across to people is that you know, regardless of what religion you are, or whatever you practice or you believe in, it does not hinder you from the r- true reality that is hidden within you know our own sheet of reality we live in now. There's a complete new reality that regardless of what you believe in or what you, you know, practice, there is still another side of a reality that people 
are instantly almost afraid of. Like, they just don't understand it. And no one's willing to talk about it and be like, you know, regardless of what you practice or what you believe in, we are all together as, a, you know, humanity is one. And it is our job to progress. Just like, you know, hopefully we don't understand what we did like Atlantis did, <laughs> where we end up getting destroyed. <laughs> but I'm hoping that, you know, we don't repeat history and we learn to coexist with each other yep. and Amber. use that to have a new step up into our society. And we can learn so much from each other. And can you imagine if you could go down the street to a certain business and you knew that the person that was working there had a special ability that, you know, if you ever needed them, you can come up to them and talk to them. No money, no charge. I don't believe in charging anybody for any of my services at all because I have been so frustrated with some of these spiritual <laughs> quote-unquote guides who, oh, I'll pay 200 bucks to be with oh, talk to me for an hour. Yeah, Excuse just... me, why should I pay you when I have the same, probably same ability as you do? Yeah, exactly. what? How does that even work? Yeah, I don't Amber. understand that, so I don't believe in that. Yeah, Hold that thought. We're going to go to our first break. We okay. will be right back here on the Scare Show. Right on. Ghost Land Paracon, 8th July, the 27th and 28th, 2013. www.lightstream-media.com Four major paranormal and historical hotspots, paranormal celebrities, paranormal acknowledgments and awards. Come see paranormal celebrity Blaine Rohan of Scare Radio International. Stephen Hill, author of Something Unseen and radio host of Alternative Frequencies. Andrea Perrin, author of the trilogy House of Darkness, House of Light. Jason Statton of Ghost Chat Radio, the Paranormal Rebel with Cynthia, co-manager of Tax, Jeff Leeper. Also seen, Daryl Campbell of My Ghost Story, Call on Camera, the entire team of Paranormal Pros, Kim Roulette and Chris Matthew, the co-authors of Secrets in the Shallows, and radio hosts. See the Bama Boys of Deep South Paranormal, Sci-Fi, and key age of Spook TV and the Orb Tones. Come to Dixie Ghostland Paragon, www. And we are back on the Scare Show with Miss Amber. And we were talking about cool stuff before we left to go on break. And uh, thank you for being on the show. For First of all, I forgot to say that earlier. I do apologize for that. <laughs> no problem. And I actually want to thank you because as a... Uh... I've heard some people in their, the chat right now saying that, you know, I feel like they, they think I know my stuff. And that's so awesome to hear because this is honestly the first time I've ever took a step into the paranormal community. I have been very shied away from it for a while because I didn't believe, you know, a lot of the people that I surrounded myself with. There's a bunch of fakes. So, you know, there's a lot of superficial people out there. And it, made me, it gave me a bad rap for a long time. So this is actually my first step into making a move in this game form that we have in the paranormal community. So I'm I'm very, very excited and thankful for you to have me on here today. Well, we're so glad to have you, and you're very knowledgeable at a fine young age of 20. And I remember, God, God, I remember being 20, like 27 years ago, but (laughs) 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 I probably retired from, no, let's see, I got in the Air Force probably, yeah, yeah, I was in the Air Force before you were born. Good Lord. That's crazy. (laughs) I know. But that is so cool, though, that uh, that you have this gift, and I, I and I hope you're like me. You embellish this gift, and you take it for what it's worth, because you had no choice in having these gifts. Exactly. But I embellish mine every day. Um, it is so fun because I've done it for 47 years, and I still get new gifts every day. I learn new stuff every day. I have in-depth conversations with my spirit guides which is just phenomenal and it's funny some of the stuff once you have in-depth conversations with you ask them little things that you wouldn't think about asking the other time you know like stupid stuff was like is there beer there and they always tell me yes there's beer i said is it cold and i asked little stupid things like that i was like are there is there food there uh do you still feel emotions and and fear and happiness and all that fun stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> and I've always I've been told yes. And and I did find out that spirit guides have a hierarchy too. They have a boss. Mm-hmm. And, and that guy 
God has a boss, and that God has a boss. It goes on for infinity. Yeah. And also, to tap with the whole spirit guides thing, I've heard from people in the in the chat feed that were talking about how do you know if it's not your brain telling you what you're hearing. Or My answer to that is you definitely need to do a lot of meditating. I so support meditation, too, along with astral projection, because it helps you figure out, the, you get more clarity on what you're hearing. Is it just your brain saying that? And you know what? To go with that even further, when your brain, if you think it's your brain telling you stuff, it probably is your subconscious. Your subconscious knows all. Yeah. I firmly believe that. And when you tap into that subconscious, you are going to hear things and see things and experience things on a different level than you have when you're just having your regular conscious on and going. Yeah. So it could be your spiritual guides even talking to you through your subconscious. But if you really want more clarity, you ask them for more clarity, and they will show themselves to you in ways that will amaze you. Oh, yeah. Def- definitely support that. So don't ever be, you know, don't battle yourself, because battling yourself is definitely not a way <laughs> to help you get clarity at all. The reason I laugh about that, because half the people that I teach, I tell them, let it flow. Do not force it. When mm-hmm. you start forcing it, your brain works against you. You let it exactly. flow and don't think about it. Just let it happen. And you'll yeah. be amazed the things you start seeing. And people start listening to me. They're like, hey, you were right. I said, yeah, I was right. You think I'm going to tell you something that ain't going to be right? I agree. I agree. And I battle with that myself, too, because... Like, there's, there's a lot of times, and my friend who's listening right now, he can definitely uh, support me when I say this. I have a huge problem with battling myself internally. Like, I don't know how to preach my, appreciate myself fully and let it flow, I guess, and let things happen. Because I'm always thinking that I have something to prove. I have to do something a certain way. And that is just society's way of, like he says, quote-unquote, programming. Yep. It makes you believe things that you don't necessarily have to believe. And that's the whole beauty of life and concept is that you just, it's to be you. And that's it's your journey, not anyone else's journey, but yours. Yep. And, like and you need to figure you. it out for yourself. Yep. And once you let that go and just let it flow, and I can tell you just from being around you because I have a lot of great gifts that I can actually see your spirit that's around you. Uh-huh. And it is very good, and it's very knowledgeable. And mm-hmm. you're you're just t- at the tip of the iceberg right now of what you're going to do and what you can do. Thank you. So I actually I really appreciate that. I've had people tell me a couple times that um, I have a warrior spirit, and I, that's why I joined the Air Force. Like my whole past life connection, I've had a lot of different past lives. <laughs> That I remember, and I am always wanting to go war, 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 fight, 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 and never stop. Uh-huh. And I feel uh-huh. like now this life, I'm a girl, not a boy anymore. I used to be a boy in all my past lives. And so they're trying to humble me this life. They said, you know what, Amber, calm down, just relax, and just go back to step one and realize that you don't always have to do war, war, war. Actually, what's really ironic is that when I was in the Air Force as a combat medic, I was kicked out slash honorably discharged because of the budget cuts from the government because they couldn't find a um, duty station for me to be located at. And I was devastated. I'm not going to lie because I've always wanted to do is be a fighter, be this, you know, hero, supposedly, you know. And it's like I got kicked back, back to square one, and now i got to, you know, start all over again with my future. And now that I've had this moment, I almost had a light bulb moment where I said, you know what, the Air Force... The government's great and all, but what my gifts are right now and what I'm learning and what I'm progressing with, that is what makes me me. And my future will have to somehow intertwine with that. It will do it forcibly without me even asking it to. So it's either me accepting my future and accepting my path that I'm being put on or keep saying, no, 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 I want to be a hero and I want to go fight. I have to learn to just, you know, even it out a little bit. Well, you know what? The nice thing about it, you can still be a warrior. Now you're a spiritual warrior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll always be a warrior. And what I, I mean that. what I mean for you guys out there that don't know what a spiritual warrior is. We fight a war every day spiritually. And it's not to fight against the spirits, it's to fight to help the spirits. Because a lot of times the spirits are so disoriented and discontented and they're frustrated. 
because they don't know what to do next. You know, they didn't get that nice little book of the dead that they got in Beetlejuice. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wish we had that in real life. Not gonna lie. No, and it is our job to help them fight and get them to the place they need to be. And now there's sometimes you do have to fight with them because they are so set in their ways that they they don't want to go to the next step. They don't want to go the next level because mm-hmm. they're so afraid of what they've been taught in life that they're all going to hell. If you were bad, you're going there, you're going there. Um, so ready. But you're not. Um, it even says in the Bible that that there is heaven and hell, but there is a place between heaven and hell before you go to either one. <clears throat> and the cool thing about it is they're on a journey like we are. And they have different levels, just like we have different levels of life when we go, in our daily lives. You know, we start off walking, or we start off crawling, then we walk, then we're teenagers, then we're out of the house and married, and or <laughs> some of us. <laughs> I don't want to marry you off yet, sorry. I'm just doing <laughs> normal progression, and then we die. Well, we go to the next level. Well, we have more learning lessons to go from that next level. And then there are so many levels that we can go through. Exactly. That, that they've yep. got to go through, that we will get to go through. But some of them are so scared of what that next level is going to hold. It's the same as a human, that fear of the unknown. Because, like I said, they don't get that nice little book that tells them, okay, you can do this and this and this. That is our job as spirit, spiritual warriors, to help them fight and even though we have to fight against them some to get them to go where they need to go. We I agree. Them. And that plays a part with when, yeah, when I deal with, um, you know, my loving dead people. It's just it's a joke, actually. They're not loving. But for the most part, you have, you know, some of them are actually really sweet. But I, you know, I struggle with that because I don't want to keep them here. It's definitely not my goal at all whatsoever. I think that um, what I see is when... I have a two, I have two different types of people. I have the ones that are like, hell no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not moving on. I'm not going towards some damn light. Because I got unfinished business going on. And then you have the ones that are like, what's going on? I never believed in this. And now all of a sudden it's happening to me. Help me, help me, help me. And it's really easy to be loving and sweet to them. At least for me, it is. Because oh, yeah. I, I see them as normal people. They're not shadows or light or anything. They're just normal people to me. And it's hard in public because I never know, like, who to talk to out loud. It's definitely a struggle fest. But yeah, believe me. <laughs> then, you have, then you have those bad ones that are, like, their whole main goal is to just drag you down, downstairs. And it's, it's hard for me because I am such a fighter. And I hate seeing these dark... People that have been around for so long, they know exactly what they're doing. They have a whole goal set planned out, and they love it when you come and bring your little EVPs and cameras, seeing some pictures of them, because it's like a little show for them. Of course. And I hate that, because, like, another thing I struggle with, I'm a huge, huge fan of Ghost Adventures, and that's just because I have a crush on Zach Baggins, no big deal. But I get really frustrated with these shows, because I watch these people go into these rooms and these places and see all these little pictures, all these little EVP recordings, and they, you know what they go and do? They walk out. <laughs> How pissed off would you be if you, let's say you're a tiger in a cage, okay? Visualize yourself as being in a really small, tight cage, and you can't go anywhere, and you're really frustrated. People are coming around your little cage, taking pictures of you, doing little voice audio, and then leaving you in the cage. They don't help you anything. Yep. That makes me mad because I wish I could go on these shows and even you know, people don't believe in this stuff. Most people, they just kind of want to see the facts and before they, you know, you don't want to freak them out too much. But I wish I could go to these locations and help these people move on because it, or bring them back to source wherever they belong because they do not need to be here anymore. Because if we're going to keep having dead people here, one, it's hard on you and me, and two, it's just asking for trouble and more fear and more negative energy living in our, you know, universe. That's not fair. Yeah. Well, let me tell you my funny Zach story. I have had Zach and Aaron and uh, whatever that other Gomer's name is. Nick. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick. Yeah. I had him on my show. My first show, I had the old Ghost Mafia show. And uh, mm-hmm. sitting there joking with him. And I, I've been friends with Zach and them for a long, long time. And uh, 
And I even told because I got Aaron and uh, Nick on the phone before I got Zach on the phone. I said, guys, this is what I'm going to do to Aaron, I mean to, to Zach tonight. And I said, I'm going to ask him if he screams like a little girl and again, can I hold his band card? And both of them just busted out laughing. I said, dude, you got to do that on air. So I waited about three or four questions in and said, oh, yeah, by the way, Zach, you scream like a little girl one more time. We're pulling your man card, you little girl. And the two just started busting out laughing. Zach was like, you suck. I said, quit screaming like a little girl then. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, he, uh, when I read his books and when I listen to him, he is definitely like a character because – I feel like he's so excited, like, to just do what he does. And I'm so jealous because, I mean, I wish I could, you know, do what he does. Like, make bank off that for a living. But at the same time, it's like, these people walk in these locations and they do all their little, you know, shows and stuff and get their, get all their information and evidence. But I've seen Zach on some of his, you know, Twitter stuff and some of his feed when he talks about his life. And it's like, he struggles a lot with negative energy attaching to him and Jeez, following him. Yes. And people don't understand how important it is to clear yourself of your energy because you're like, imagine yourself as a filter, like <laughs> yep. a like a vent filter. And stuff likes to creep in there. Like, let's go to the mall, for instance. I want you to visualize going to the mall. Every time you bump into somebody, you have that awkward staring thing where you look at them in the eye and you're kind of like turn yourself away because you're like, why are they looking at me? But you look at the same time, that's a connection. When you talk to somebody or it make any kind of non-verbal connection with anybody, you are getting some of their energy in your filter just by doing those things. And it's like, if you don't meditate and clear yourself, your true energy and your true gifts, and I believe everyone has a true gift, is like, it's being suffocated. It yep. can't grow and be itself. That's you need why, to clear it. That's why I, I, I'm a Reiki master as well, so I've learned to... I'm so clear. in love with Reiki. I've never been able to get into it. As oh, it's so easy. Do. I can teach you how to do Reiki. I will teach you for free. <laughs> it is so easy. You'll go, that's it. <laughs> I mean, and, and they make it seem so big. I, I, I see these people that are charging $10,000 to do Reiki sessions, and I'm like... You know, karma mm -hmm. will come back and bite you on the ass for that because that is something that should be given free. Yeah. And I willingly. Agree. Because mm -hmm. energy, which Reiki is, it is the study of energy. Energy is always around you. It always has been here. It always will be here. Energy will never go away. Mm -hmm. But energy does recycle itself. It goes from positive energy to negative energy to positive energy to negative energy. Yep. You've got to recycle it because there is, just like plants, plants mm -hmm. use carbon dioxide to make oxygen, which turns yep. around. We turn into carbon dioxide. They turn around and make it oxygen again. There is a cycle with energy just as well. Some of the negative energy is actually used by things and turned into positive energy. And positive energy is turned into negative energy after a while. And it's just a cycle that goes round and round and round. And it always will, always has been, and never will stop. It's definitely interesting, and I agree with you 100%. I mean, I never, like I said, never really got into Reiki. But as a person who does what I do all the time, it's kind of hard not to see that kind of stuff happening all the time to people. Yeah. And I know that I've catch myself a lot, my, even off my parents. They've struggled with me for quite some time. When I, you know, wake up from the middle of the night because 200 dead people are in my room trying to talk to me, <laughs> and it's kind of like a horror movie, Okay, my, right. ener my energy the next day is like zombie. See, that may teach you a little trick with the Reiki. You can flow mm -hmm. energy, and I'll teach you another little trick, too. Mm -hmm. Make them stand in the line. Tell them straight up, so look, I appreciate you're here. I think that you're here, but do me a favor. And take a number. <laughs> get, take a number, get in line, and tell me one at a time. I do not need all of you at one time. Okay, exactly. I, can't, I can't give you the attention you need if I'm, been, if I'm being bombarded. And I have found that have worked so well for me when I started that. Instead of getting, you know, 300 spirits around me at one time. I'll still have 300 spirits, but I'll have a line of 300 spirits. 
and they'll come. And, and I've got to a point too. I got to ask: Are you an empath as well? Can you feel what they feel? Me? Yes, definitely. I. Okay. The biggest thing for me is like when I when I say that I feel dead people. Let me clarify. I feel their wounds. I feel what they're feeling. Like I feel like their their emotions and their wounds. That's what that's what really sucks. And sometimes I'll be sitting, you know, chilling, doing my college homework online. And all of a sudden, I feel like I'm going into cardiac arrest. And I'm like, what is going on right now? Like, stop it. Just relax. Just, like, let me have my space, and I'll help you, you know, when I'm done with my homework kind of thing. And it's, that's what I feel is a lot of their wounds and a lot yeah. of what they're, what and they're what experiencing still. And you can start dealing with them and say, okay, please do not show me. I can see you. I can hear you. Tell me. I can, I can see that you got a, hit, a hole in your head. I can see your half of your back is gone. I can see that. I can yeah. empathize with that. But please do not make me feel that. Mm-hmm. And I will help yeah. you any way I can. But do not physically let me feel that. Because I will feel some of the residual anyway. I can't completely stop all of it. But I'm getting better at it. Yeah, and I, I'm actually really glad that I came on the show today because I feel like you're giving me a lot of insight that I definitely, I feel like I'm a little baby kind of walking around in the paranormal world and I'm kind of fending for myself and I appreciate having somebody who's not charging me $300 to talk to him right now about my life. <laughs> no, and this is what's cool because I understand where you're coming from more, yeah, I guess you will know. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to go through living in the South here in Alabama Growing up oh, in yeah. the Bible Belt, yep. where everybody, except for my grandmother, who was a Native American medicine woman, and mm-hmm. I know she saw spirits because I watched her talk to them, and I could see them while she was talking to them, but she would never admit it, that she could do it. She knew she she knew that I knew she did it, but she would never say it out loud, And but she was the only one that ever gave me any support. Any other time I said something about it, I got in trouble for it. <laughs> oh man so I got to the point where I would not say anything to anyone but I still couldn't stop like you said I still couldn't stop seeing them hearing them yeah um, coming at it's a me. <laughs> daily struggle I, I understand that and I, I I'm so jealous I'm not going to lie I, because when you talk about spirits and stuff, like, I wish, that's, a lot of parents have also talked about to me before, they're like, you know, Amber, can't you, like, teach yourself to talk to spirits, and I, I struggle with it, because all I'm seeing are zombie-looking freaks walking around, and it's like, I wish I could talk to the ones that people want to hear from, yeah. and I mean, people do want to hear from the people that are walking around, like, when I, just recently, I went on a, um, road trip to South Dakota. Anyone from South Dakota? I'm Paul or not you. But I went to South Dakota and I went to um, Rapid City. And I was at a hotel literally Saturday night, last Saturday night. This little girl, and re- remind you, I'm in a hotel room with all my family. This little girl comes up to me and crawls out from underneath my bed <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning. And comes up to me and puts her hand up to her face and says, like, hush, like, shh, kind of like, be quiet. And I was like, okay. And I looked at her a little bit clearer in the dark, and she had, her throat was slit. Yeah. And as a combat medic, I'm always, like, ready to go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Injuries, let's go. And I was like, hey, come talk to me in the bathroom so I'm not, like, talking out loud at everyone at 2 o'clock in the morning. Went in the bathroom, found out her name, who she was, what she's doing here, and she told me a lot of information I went and wrote down to give to her family because she wanted me to tell things to her parents. Come to find out the next morning, my dad woke up and he said, hey, I heard you talking in the bathroom last night. You know, who were you talking to? And I said, this girl named Becky. She's nine years old. She wrote a gap in her teeth. She's really sweet and helped her try to move on. I said, but I don't know anything about her. He went online, did some research. Um, Becky O'Connell died in 1990. She got raped and murdered and, uh, by this man. And he was not put on death row until last year. And the reason he wasn't put on death row yet, because people claimed him as, you know, clinically insane so that, you know, procrastinated his 
his sentence. Yeah. And that's why she was hanging around because she wanted to make sure because she kept telling me this man's guilty, he's guilty, and no one's doing anything about it. And I was like, yeah. okay, well, let me try to figure that out for you. So she, all she needed was a little bit of clarification that yes, he's gone now. You don't have to be here anymore. You don't have to suffer all these injuries you're still feeling. And I am trying to. I still find her family to contact them and tell them tell them some information that she. Uh, specifically told me to them. But it, I'm kind of, like, I'm upset about the fact that it's not like I can do that all the time. <laughs> it's yeah. very rare that I still find somebody. Like, usually people I see are, like, three minutes ago, there's gone a car accident, and now they're, like, wandering around. Yeah. And so it's harder for me. But I'm so jealous of you and the fact that you can, like, know right off the bat in the moment and just be able to do that. I wish that I could learn that somehow, but I feel like I'm, I got a long way to go. <laughs> it's a struggle. Oh, definitely. Hey, we're going to take our 8 o'clock break, and when we come back, Kim will be with us, and, and Kim will Kim will probably have some good questions for you. So, Amber, Yay, I'm stick so around excited. And, uh, we'll be back here on the Scare Show. So let's go to that break. Get rid of some stuff in here. Get rid of that one, and let's go to a little golden earring. This is Robin Shelby, Slimer from Ghostbusters 2. You are listening to The Scare Show. And The Scare Show is back. Are you with us, Kim? I am. Can you hear me? Very well. How are you this evening? I'm very well. How are you? I'm better now that our show's working. (laughs) Yes, I know. You were kind of mad there at the start. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you were even mad at me for just telling you we couldn't hear Amber. Gosh. I wasn't mad at you. I was just like, you were like the fifth person said it's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, don't kill the messenger. I won't. <laughs> How are you doing, Kim? I am well. It's, I've just been enjoying the show and listening to you talk. You are so energetic, and you just love what you do. And I, I've just been taking it all in. I really sincerely appreciate that because, honestly, I have quite the uh, sailor's mouth, so I've been trying very, very hard to just, you know, be professional, keep it chill, don't say anything crazy, you know, be open-minded. So I really appreciate your input on that. Well, see, our old show before we got picked up um, on the Sydney station and the London station, we could say what we wanted to, but now, you know, we we have practices and standards, so, you know, so we have to watch what I say mostly because Kim's good. It's just me. I'm, using, I'm like you. We're military. That's all we know. It's normal. Exactly. To us. <laughs> it's, a, it's a struggle, but it's all right. I'm doing a pretty good job, I think. I don't think I've said any F-bombs yet, so that's good. <laughs> no, but I almost did at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's okay. I'm glad that we figured it out, though. It's obviously working in our favor. The stars are aligned. We're all good. So, Kim, I want to know if you have any questions for me since you just said that you were listening to me previously. So, hit me with your best shot. I want to know. I do. I want to know. Um, I've got a, a son who's uh, big 10 in just uh, another few months, and he, um, as you mentioned earlier about ADHD, He's recently been diagnosed, so I'd like to know what kind of advice you would give um, to us. Perfect. Great. All right. So what I tend to become these kind of uh, situations is the medication that they're giving your child, I highly, highly suggest, I think it's like a dire emergency, do not give it to them because it's just going to make it, you're going to lose that spark that they have. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever special gifts that they have, like, or whatever they may not fully understand yet, or maybe you can't even understand yet, you're going to desensitize them from that, and they're not going to have it anymore when they get older. And I know that's very hard for parents these days. You know, they want their kids to do good in school, and trust me, I was, like, the worst person in school ever. Like, I hated the, the system. I hated teachers. I hated authority. Like, I was all against it. And... My parents really told me and struggled with me. They said, you know, Amber, you have to understand that I know this is not what you're used to. And whatever life, previous life you must have been on and where you came from, 
understand that this is the society we live in right now. In order to be successful and in order to, you know, flourish in our society, you have to, you know, the right of packages. And high school and school is a big one. In order to get anywhere, to have any kind of recognition in your life, you have to make that step. So it's going to be a little bit hard for your child, your son. Um, does he do anything specifically that you're worried about, or is there just the ADHD thing that you're very kind of uncomfortable with right now? Which one is it? Um, yeah, I mean, he, I think the main issue um, is just at school um, is his excessive talking. And the way the doctors explained it to us was that, you know, that was the hyperactive part mm-hmm. of the ADHD that he was expressing. And it's very disruptive in the classroom. So, you know, it makes me very uncomfortable because I don't want to send my child to school thinking that, you know, he's being disruptive and, you know, making it bad for the other kids that are there trying to learn. So, um, well, and of course, I, I, I want him to learn because, you know, it's very important as well. But Well, the best thing I can do for, for that, I've had actually, I dated a guy who had very hyperactive, like, let's talk a lot, like, a lot, a lot. And <laughs> what you have to, like, do to help them with that is you have to um, challenge them. School is not challenging these days. If you really look into the system, it's really not. It's kind of dumbed down, like, significantly since, you know, in the past. If you look at other countries, they're, like, whew, way ahead of us than what we are. And they come to our school, and they get freaking straight A's because it's easy as hell. So, so for them, you have to challenge them. I would highly suggest that you ask him questions. Do connect with him on a way where you have that relationship that he knows he can come to you if he has questions. I want you to challenge what he knows. Because if he talks a lot and he's very, like, if he's sociable, which is a different situation, just tell him, look, you need to understand, make him feel special. Make him understand that just because you have a different way of life and a different way of, you know, learning and experiencing things does not mean everyone else is like you. My dad's best way to make me feel special was, and this is totally, like, <laughs> kind of, like, crazy. My dad got me into superheroes, comic books. And he basically, in that sense, told me that these people are special like you. Even if I'm not, like, you know, human torch and, you know, crazy, i am still got something that people don't have. So tell him that and make that connection so you are very, very special and you have extremely awesome abilities that no one else has. You're like a superhero, but he hasn't figured out his powers yet. In order to be that way, you have to be very, um, you have to adapt to the, the way other kids are. And by doing that, you know, take a step back. Make them feel empowered because they have a very, any of kids have a huge sense of self and authority. And you have to basically give him his little throne, even though that can be kind of, you know, controversial with punishments and stuff like that and, you know, raising your child. You still have to give him a little bit of a throne and say, you know, you are special and you are better than some people. And you need to um, respect other people who aren't as great as you are. And even if that might not be completely true, kids are kids, and they will go with anything you say. Their minds are like cement, very impressionable. So if you make that impression at an early, you know, same age, how old is your son? He'll be 10 in just a few months. Oh, right on. So I think what I said earlier, the whole impressionable thing, it's still in works right now. He's going to be, you know, stepping into middle school soon, right? Yeah, and... Um... Yeah, probably uh, probably two more years at his his current school, and then he'll go to middle school. Okay. Well, um, definitely try to take some of my advice. I think, does he have a certain, like, I'm trying to label him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get a specific label on your son. Is there something that he really enjoys, like a certain hobby, or, you know, like, does he love Star Wars, or what, what does he do? Like, what is his passion right now? Oh, gosh. Um... Yeah, I mean, he loves, you know, Legos, uh, Star Wars. Um, really? <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I yeah. get that right on the hammer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's That's into, awesome. yeah, he's into pretty much all those things that 10 year old boys are into right now. So, um, that's, that's awesome. So, Kim, I have a, so that's a great little, like, that's a great foundation for this. So, if he's into, like, when you said Legos, like, kind of hit me in the head. He's a builder, so he's very, um, he almost like very handiwork. He likes to do things that, you know, keep him occupied. So mm-hmm. if he's, he has to be challenged, like I'm saying. So you need to get him into some kind of like program or some kind of like 
I don't know, maybe like the school has a program that, you know, maybe you could do like robotics or something. Something that makes him challenge and gets him in the zone. Because if you work out that energy, all that excessive energy he probably has, you find a way to make him kind of drain it out a little bit, he will not be so hyperactive when he's, you know, doing school. So give him a different hobby to get into that actually up a lot of his time because he needs to be challenged constantly. That's okay. Funny. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. Okay. Get him into that. Yeah, get him into, like, technology. Get him into, he likes that kind of stuff. Like, you know, challenge him. Say, you know what? Since you think you're so <laughs> intelligent, because most kids think they very are these days, challenge them. And say, you know what? Then show me how you can do this. Show me how you can improve in this. And that'll waste, like, my dad put me in karate when I was little. I was, like, I'm a third-degree black belt. So I was in Taekwondo for, like, ever. And that was my way of getting all my energy and anger out. Because I was a very angry kid <laughs> all the time. I was very stressed <laughs> out and very mad about what was going on. And that was my way of de-stressing. And when I got to school, I was so tired from karate last night that, whatever, I'll go with the motions and let it get work. That kind of stuff. Okay. So get involved. Get very involved. So do you think you would have been... Um labeled ADHD as a kid I was, as well? I Are was. You were? Labeled, yes, I was ADHD. And my um, parents, my da- my dad is very into uh, the paranormal community. He told the doctor flat out, oh, I'm not giving her those meds. Not happening. She's special. And that was, I'm so glad he did it because who knows who I'd be today? Who knows what I would have done? I mean, if I was such an angry child, I would have only assumed, and in high school, I'm not even going to lie on radio right you know, I got in a lot of fights in school. I was a, I thought I was a badass. <laughs> and I thought that no one was better than me. And I got suspended so much for just picking fights with people and just laying them out on the ground. Because I was like, you know what? Do you know who I am? Do you know what I'm capable of? And nobody, you know, they're kids. No one's going to think you're a badass. You're just like everyone else. You're in the same system. And I feel like if I would have continued with that, you know, if I would have had that kind of attitude through high school, I probably would be uh, unemployed and doing nothing with my life because I thought I was better than everyone else. And that's not the way to make it in this world, obviously. <laughs> so definitely get him involved and get him into something that exerts that energy so that he doesn't have so much of it balled up. In class, class is boring. When he gets bored, it's going to, you know, let it all out. Yep. What happens? Yep. <laughs> Been there, done that. Got the T-shirt. <laughs> I do that Blame at work now. Are you are you ADHD too, Blaine? Well, the, back in the seventies, when uh, when I grew up from the sixties and seventies, they didn't have no diagnosis for that. You were just a, they just actually just called you a little bratty ass kid. It's <laughs> what we were labeled as. <laughs> exactly. And that's I why I get, think that, I, you know, I would get so bored in class, like we'd be in history class, and they'd be t- be talking about something like the Quakers. And I say, well, there was an offset of them called the Shakers. No, there wasn't. And I, they, he made me write a report on it. And I'm like, I can see these people. The reason they call them Shakers was because when they went into a religious trance, they started shaking. So they called them Shakers. And I proved our, I proved a teacher wrong in like second grade on that one. They didn't like me. <laughs> Oh, man. I love when people do that kind of stuff. That's what teachers, I think they're in for one hell of a ride coming up the next couple of years because there's more and more kids being born with special, special abilities. And yep. It's going to get harder and harder for teachers these days. And it already is now if you look at the system and the government and the stuff that people debate with these days, the rioting of teachers in the streets. Like, come on now. Grow up. I should be a teacher. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have the patience. I, I, actually, I'll take that back. Me neither. I, do, I do have the patience to be a teacher. But what I teach is, like, I teach people like you. I teach Kim's kid how to deal with their gifts. But if I had to teach, like, a history class or a math class or something, I would be arrested the first day because I'd choke somebody. <laughs> I just have no patience. And that would be with my own child. Well, I probably wouldn't, you know, choke somebody. I hate math. I'm so bad at math. It's oh. not even funny. Like, I am, like, in dumb math my whole life. But I think, like, what you just touched on... I just had a conversation outside with my dad saying that, God, Dad, I wish that I could have, like, a little Professor Xavier school for little, like, gifted indigos and just have, like, almost like a daycare just to help them, you know, develop and so they're not shut down for what they have. But that's never going to happen, ever, so that sucks. But I definitely, if there's a school like that, please let me know, like, ASAP so I can join it in a heartbeat. 
I would love to. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It it's is very true. true. <laughs> like, so does that help you a little bit, though, Kim, with your with your son? It does. It does. Um, I know you know, I just... It's just hard because, you know, it it affects so much more than just school. You know, it affects the whole family dynamic, too. So it's just, you know, it's a lot to work at. It's a lot. It's a struggle. So... Um, yeah. It's a good it's it's a good idea though about the martial arts and it's something that I've thought of before and I've mentioned it to him but he like he doesn't um, I think part of the ADHD is he doesn't want to try new things because he kind of struggles with um, I don't know so that's just one of the things of ADHD is you he don't want to try get, new he things want to get involved yeah you don't want to try new things to get involved and I think okay. Like I said earlier, I'm so blessed that my dad was like, he was, you know, desert storm, no fear, guns blazing, like, at me. And I basically had no choice of what was going on with my life. And I basically was kind of forced into some things. And I look back on it, and I'm like, oh, God, parents shouldn't force their kids to anything. And that's what I stand for. But then I'm like, well, wait, what the hell? Like, I was forced into stuff. I turned out freaking great. Like, that, I definitely think that when you have indigo children, you have to be very assertive. You have to tell them, look, I'm the leader, and you are my follower right now. And until I train you, young Padawan, to be better and be able to survive out in this world, you're not going anywhere out of my house. That's how yeah. it works. My dad that, is, like, my, my master. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense because that's definitely my, my oldest son. He's, you know, he's just, like, you know, when he was in daycare, when he was three and four years old, his teachers would tell me, you know, he's just an old soul. <laughs> yeah. He has he has wisdom beyond his years, and mm-hmm. and um, yeah. I so he, that. yeah, he's just kind of right. I, I kind of have to be the assertive one, and like you're saying, he wants to tell me um, that he knows it all. But <laughs> well, you know, I think the more that you talk to him about that stuff and that's what he might actually be really interested he might actually listen to you I mean if you want to this is just an offer if you think that like I'm like I said earlier in the show I am so free of any charge and I love 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 to help people if you ever want to just give me a call and talk to your son and he doesn't know me he's going to be like what the hell am I talking to but I definitely (laughs) I like to challenge kids I want them to figure out themselves so that they're able to you know defend themselves in this big bad world that's definitely what I stand for and I think that I don't want them to end up being like some of these kids that go and shoot up schools because they're angry and they're misunderstood and nobody understands that I am so in this world right now existing and I understand everything I possibly can put my mind around and I will help them as much as I can yeah Please definitely take that up. yeah Definitely. It's a great idea. I've had, he talks, he talks to Blaine. He talks to, I've had him talk to some other friends of mine before I met yeah. Blaine. So he's, he, he'll talk to you. It's no big deal. So yeah, I think sure it would be you, great. Does he love you, Blaine? I'm oh, sure yeah. he does. <laughs> yeah, that's my, I, I call him and her daughter my shadows. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> that's so sweet. See, I'm terrified to have kids because I don't know what the hell they're going to have. Like, that's going to be insane. It's going to be one hell of a ride. Oh, like, I think I know about kids now, but, God, I've, I've never had one, so I really honestly can't, like, do that. But maybe when I get older, I'll figure it out, but I'm definitely terrified. So I'm, I feel your struggle right now. <laughs> yeah, your best oh, bet right man. now is to help other people's kids. Yep, that's, that's what, what I'm going to do. I was told to tell you. But when it's, you? Your, when it's your turn to have a child, your child's going to be gifted. I can tell you that now. <laughs> I know I'm telling my you know the person I'm with right now I'm like you better be ready to go because like when I first met him honestly the first conversation this is completely irrelevant but the first conversation he ever had with me because I he doesn't talk I think he's an he's an indigo too in his own way but he's almost like the very um non-talkative kept to himself silent type and I'm definitely not silent at all so it kind of worked out because I talk he listens it worked out but he told me, the first thing he told me was, I asked him about, you know, which favorite movies we like to do on the weekends. And he goes, I like horror movies. And I was like, oh, my God, me too. What are your favorite? 
he was like, I like the serial killer ones. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I like the ghost ones and like the poltergeist ones. And he goes, I don't believe in ghosts. And I went, oh, we're, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely not going to work. And like, he was so anti everything and believing anything. And now that we've been together for almost a year, it's like, he has learned so much and he has embraced so much of this other reality that nobody deals with every, all the time. And I, you know, I've already told him, I said, look, when this whole kid thing comes around, you better be ready to go because this is going to be one hell of a ride for me. I think I know a lot right now. I'm going to learn so much more. And I'm humble with that. <laughs> Not happening. But I appreciate what you said about that. Helping kids now. That's definitely something that I... I have a passion for helping kids. Well, you, so, can have, def- you, you can ask Kim if my spirit guide, Janawa, says to do something, it's 99.9.99% dead right. <laughs> yes. yes. We listen to Janawa. <laughs> Janawa, I, I, I did listen to her one time, and good Lord, she messed me up. I won't do it again. If she told me to go out there right now and just jump off the highest bridge, I would ask her which one and and, and how many times you want me to do it? Damn, that's crazy. Hey, but she's she, when she tells me to do something, it is for a very good reason. Now, she would never tell me to do any harm to anyone. But I think if she ever did, she'd have a good enough reason for it that I'd still do it just because she's never led me wrong. Hmm. So do you think that, and I'm sure you're going to say yes, like what the hell are you talking about, Amber? But um, do you think that, I feel like, I, ha- I I know I have spirit guides, I understand that, but it's mm-hmm. so hard for me to um, to listen to them all. <laughs> it's so hard for me to be like, I feel like a lot of mine are like almost extraterrestrial, does that sound crazy? Like they just sound like they're not from this planet at all, and I struggle day to day, and a lot of kids that I know, the little girl that I met yesterday at the mall, and she asked me where I was from, and I said, I'm not from this planet. And she goes, oh, my God, me too. These kids know that we're, like, not from this planet at all. <laughs> it's like, I thought it was hilarious. So I was like, oh, my God, that makes so much sense. It's like, I don't feel like I'm from here at all. You, you know, and, and let me tell you this, the language hmm. you're hearing. Remember what we talked about at the beginning of the show, where you yeah. think you're from and which you are from there. Atlantis, mm-hmm. they're speaking to you in your native language. They f- still think that you understand the language. You have to tell them, I cannot understand that anymore. Please speak English for me. That's exactly what I struggle with. <laughs> Different languages. Crazy languages. Yeah. I mean, I speak fluent German, but so many languages I hear, I'm just like, Whew. oh, man, like, you're killing me. I can't even understand. That's what I struggle with. So I, I will take that um, as advice, and I will try to figure that out. But I had to do in the meantime, with, I had to do it with Janawa because she would speak full blooded Cherokee to me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, even though my grandmother used to cuss at us in Cherokee, I don't remember none of the language. So please mm-hmm. speak to me in English. And she didn't like it at first because she thought that I was still, still supposed to remember my native language, one of my native languages. And I'm like, uh-uh. They can happen. I can understand what you're saying, but I don't understand what you're saying, if it makes sense. So speak to me in English where I can really understand you. Okay. I'll take that in. I'm so really excited. I'm still like 100% energy blown. Kim, do you have any more questions? I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I do. I do, man. Um, are we up against a break? Please? Yeah, we sure are. Boy, you called that one good, Kim. Hold that <laughs> thought. Hold that question. And guys, we'll be right back here on the Scare Show as soon as I delete a couple songs. I forgot to delete here a minute ago. Durr. <laughs> I'm getting mad modes. It hates Kim. All right. Let's go to break, y'all. We'll be right back. This is Savannah Jade Rehut from The Wall Dead. I'm playing Penny, Carl, Sophia, Zombies, name it, and you're listening to The Scare Show. And we are back on The Scare Show. Last break. And I know, Kim, I know you had a question, so go ahead. Get it out there, girl. <laughs> okay. Hit me with it. Okay. Um, 
So I just wanted to, you know, my I've got a, two other children, and I just wanted to get an idea of what I should look for in them as far as, like, you know, the indigo children. Um, you know, what are the signs? You know, what should I look for? They're only um, five and three and a half. Okay. So when I tell parents about the signs and symptoms, pretty much of your diagnosis, as I call it. Um, what you need to look for is, like I put in our wide, you know, variety of different types of indigos. You need to, you know, think of those also as a way to label them. I mean, with the whole different elements and stuff like that. But if you're looking for, like, personality things, um, I'm just going to start rambling until it starts to click with you, okay? Here we go. <laughs> uh, okay. Indigo kids are very um, sense of purpose, sense of self. They're very strong in who they are, and they're not afraid to tell you who they are and where they come from. And they don't have, like, an authority sense to them. They also can, the opposite side of that is they can be very um, kept to themselves, very secluded, almost like little recluses that kind of just do their thing. And you really don't know what's going on in their world, but you definitely need to be more involved in it. They can also be um, highly apparent, highly uh, overactive, like you said, hyperactive. They can be very... Um, they either be that or they can be very slow, very lazy, like uh, me. And you can have the ones that uh, are almost like they're scared. Some of them are going to be very scared and very sketchy. Like they really they don't trust anybody. They have a lot about trust issues, maybe because of a past life. Because keep in mind, these kids have been, probably been reincarnated from their past life. And so we're to figure out this new world that they're in. Some of them might not have been reincarnated since like the 40s or, you know, even 1800s. And they're not used to the whole technology and all these different things that people experience. Some of them are also very, um, very petty, very like angry. They have a lot of anger management problems. They have um, a problem with picking fights, so they're not afraid to yell at the top of their lungs and scream at you and throw things because that's you know what they used to do. They could have been you know an animal in a past life. You don't know that. So okay. aggression is a big one. They can also have a, um, how do I say this? Almost an anarchy feel. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. They're very, uh, like for me, when I was little, I was talking about the Illuminati when I was little. My dad was like, what the hell are you talking about? Nice. Why? <laughs> and I was so obsessed with, like, mainstream media and how, you know, fake it was to me and how much I felt like there was, like, hidden agendas going on and, you know, secret government stuff. And I was just very anti-government when I was little. And I, you know, I'm not going to lie, I still am to this day. And they have that almost like they, they're they ready for war. They're ready to fight. And they're ready to uh, call out everyone's bullshit. That's basically what they feel like. Good. Um, they should. They're all, yeah, they're, they should. That's a very, they're very strong in a sense. And you can tell that you know, some of them are old souls and very wise, but some of them are very just power hungry. They're ready to go. And they're angry. You also have the ones that um very bossy, like I said earlier, very, very bossy. They think that uh, you're wrong, and they're right, and you don't understand where they're coming from. They're going to make you understand. They're going to lecture their little hearts out. Um, they, they're they also obsessed with things that they shouldn't be obsessed with. That's a huge sign. If you, like for me, for example, um, when I was, you know, four years old, five years old, I was dressing up as... An Atlantean princess, and I was trying to find my home. And we went to the Bahamas actually when I was ten years old. We went to that Atlantis resort. It was spooky. Nice. The parents knew that I was in love with it, and they, my little diary when I was little, I encourage families to make their kids write about their lives. It's very important. Um, journal is a huge thing. I had a journal with me in my whole life, and when I went to my little visit to Atlantis. I was crying on the plane because I didn't want to leave. I felt like that was, like, one of my homes. Like, that was, like, what my life was supposed to be like with just beaches and serenity and calmness. And it is those kind of places. Uh -huh. And I was so devastated. I was like, I'm a princess. I'm supposed to be in Atlantis, and why can't I find this as my home? Why am I stuck here in Texas? I'm so frustrated. And that's a huge sign. So they start to be obsessed with, like, I've had some kids come up to me, and they love Celtic stuff. Like, they love, like you know, old rooms, and, you know, they love to get into witchcraft. They love that. I feel like it's part of them. They love to, you know, listen to their ancestors and be in nature. Nature's a huge sign, too. Wow. Indigos connect with nature because that's an energy that is pure it's and true. 
It is funny. You're sitting there describing me to a T, so I'm just sitting there laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should go to the Atlantis Resort, too, because it's awesome. Um, but uh, I plan on that, it. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's the best. <laughs> and another thing is um, kids that um, they have a really, really bad attention span. So if you see them, like, you're talking to them, and they're not listening to you, you have to, like, get into their head a little bit and be like, hey, I'm talking to you. Like, listen to me. And they're, like, off in Lola Land because they're talking to, you know, probably spirit guides or talking to dead people or talking to animals. Like, you don't even know. Like, there's some kids that can do the coolest stuff. So you have to be really into that and be very involved in their life. Don't ever let them be off on their own because that's a big thing that my parents had a mistake with. They, when I was younger, uh, they were so sick of me and my BS that I was pulling my personality that I wandered off on my own and I started to find myself in different ways that I probably shouldn't have found myself I got into a lot of um, I'm not saying it's anything it's wicked people or anything but I got involved in that and I think my energy and the, what, what I experience and what I feel it was like all the bad things were coming to me and they were taking over my life they haunted my house it was this big cluster of just BS in our house my mom was sick of it she was hearing, like, glass shattering and seeing stuff move across the wall. And she was like, what are you doing to our house? Like, you're making it get haunted. Stop doing what you're doing. You left me alone. And when you leave those kids alone, they they get into stuff that they, you know, it's like they're getting into trouble a little bit. And if they're not knowledgeable in what they're doing, it's going to get really bad. And possessions are a big thing, too. I, I talk about that highly. Some kids, like, I know I had a little boy come up to me. A lot of his parents were like, God, you know, his name is Johnny. He was such a sweetheart. But he was obsessed with guns and violence and blood and destruction. And his biggest thing was drawing. Drawing is another key sign. If your kids drawing things, save them. Keep them. Sometimes they predict things. Sometimes, like for me, for another example, when I was in third grade, I was in art class. And I freaking loved art, okay? It was an expression overload for me. And I could do whatever I want and get a freaking A for it. I was great at it. I drew, we were, our lesson was drawing about urban cities, and I drew a city with, you know, you're going to start being like, oh, God, two towers and a plane crashing in one of the towers, and a week later, that's when, you know, New York happened. 9-11 happened, and my parents were like, oh, my God, that's freaking, they thought that was crazy, but drawing is a big thing. Kids have, you know, ways of, like an outlet, they need an outlet for what they're doing, so drawing's a big one. Um, this little kid, though, that I was talking to, he was drawing, like, freaking the sun burning the earth, and he was drawing, you know, school shootings and just absolute war and violence. And I asked him, I was like, why Why do you feel like you need to do that? I said, you're scaring your parents. Like, you're doing a very, very good job of scaring your parents. But that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You have to understand that, yes, this humanity sucks. Yes, this world sucks. And everyone deserves to burn, quote, unquote, in his eyes. But you need to understand that in order for you to be greatness one day, you have to adapt. You have to let it go. Understand that everyone's ignorant and that you're the best. And understand that you have ways that nobody understands yet. And one day you will be great. People will understand you. But by acting like a violent psychopath, you're not going to get anyone's attention. They're going to throw you into a little room that's white and you're going to be stuck in a straitjacket. That's not how it works. See what I'm saying? So you have to have this, like, an outlet for these kids. It's a big thing. Drawing, like I said, writing a big thing. Um, another little key thing that kids like to do is, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. Talk to themselves. They'll all look in the mirror. They'll talk to themselves. Like, have conversations with themselves. And you're thinking, oh, my God, my kid's going crazy. No, they're not. They're trying to figure out their soul. Yep. They're talking to the soul. They're trying to understand, hey, why are you giving me these thoughts? Hey, why are you telling me to go do this? I don't want to go do this. I don't want to be this way. And I struggle with that all the time. It's like I'm battling a freaking phoenix all the time. Because I'm like, hey, 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 I know you want to go guns a-blazing on everyone in their life right now. But you need to adapt. You need to be calm. You need to find yourself. And that's what they're doing, trying to find themselves all the time. Um, also, when you're driving on road trips, this is the thing my parents learned very early. Uh, don't do it. Just don't do it, because you're going to get a kid who's not going to enjoy the family vacation. You're going to get a kid that's going, oh, my God, new things. Oh, my God, new people. Oh, my God, information overload and perhaps even dead people connections. When you move a kid a lot when they're an indigo, 
they uh, they struggle because all they want is foundation and security in what they're doing and where they're, and where they're at in their life. And the con, if you keep constantly moving them around, <laughs> they're going to stress themselves out. They're always stressed out. They're always high in anxiety and they're always on high alert for anything. So if you keep moving them around and putting situations they're not used to, their real side is going to come out. It's almost like they're battling themselves, like I said earlier. They're just, they're struggling with who they are and who they want to be. And it's just like they're looking for their throne in a way. That's a huge sign. Just people who are highly anxiety and highly stressed out. A lot of little girls are, a lot of little boys are these days. <laughs> kids, technology, big one, autistic kids. Any people listening who have autistic kids, I love autistic kids with all my heart because they are the sweetest thing somehow. People always say they're antisocial. Oh my God, they can't connect with you. They can't, you know, say I love you. They can't, you know what I mean? But have you seen them behind a computer? Have you seen them when they work on stuff? Have you seen them like go to work? They're genius. Yep. Leonardo da Vinci was the most antisocial person that everyone hated. But uh, guess who was a genius? Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> like stuff like that. Yep. Society's society not used to people like that. They want people to be sociable and fake and superficial and, you know, mind programming, brainwashing BS. And these indigo children are not like that. They will not fit any kind of label. They will not fit the system at all. You have to get them into something they're good at. Like if they're good at, you know, building blocks and Legos, get them into something that involves building. If they love to draw, get them into designing. Get them in something that makes them feel great because they're good at it. That's what I think. So those are my my labels. I could be more specific with them and not so write anything about it. I probably I probably should make like a website about it with specific points for people who really want to you know catch everything I just said. But uh, I hope that maybe that could help you with your kids that you have to help them under to identify them. Some of them, actually, my little sister is one of them. She has no abilities, and she she's terrified of me. I'll just be straight up with you. <laughs> she hated me when I was older, like when I was little with her, because I scared her, and I was talking things that weren't there, and she was, like, devastated because I was weird, and, like, I was the emo kid that nobody liked. And my family still to this day absolutely disregards me and hates me. Hence, why I'm becoming a mortician. See how that works? I found something that I can be who I am, and still coexist in the you know society world for them. I'm doing them a favor, basically. Being a medium slash mortician, how great is that? <laughs> hey, you always have steady clients. Exactly, and they're always like you know quiet. They're dying to see me every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, funeral homes are actually very fun for me. I walk in there and they're like. Oh, you can see us? Oh, yeah. I can hear you, too. Oh, we can't talk about Blaine no more. Like, cool. <laughs> I love when I... That's why I want to be a funeral director so bad is because 99% of all of the people go to their funeral, and I love it, because they want to see who's giving a speech, who's talking, who showed up, who didn't show up, because they want to know. It's a little honoring memorial about them for, you know, a couple hours. And that's a huge deal. And I think people don't make a big deal out of funerals as much anymore because the funeral is depressing. But they're not supposed to be depressing. It's a rite of passage. You should be excited for them to figure out their new life, their new, the new energy that they're in, that light that they're going to be in. You're supposed to be excited for them and praise them and, you know, hope and wish the best for them. It's like when you have a kid leave, you know, home to go to college. It's an exciting thing. And people don't make it exciting these days. And I definitely think that, you said people are watching the funerals. I want them to be proud of what they're, you know, they're having, what they're seeing. So I've told everybody they're going to have a big party at my funeral. Exactly. Me too. <laughs> and then this I'm guy. showing up naked on the Super Bowl. And I said, I told y'all there was ghosts. This guy that used to work with my husband when he, he died young, he had type 1 diabetes, but... His family um, threw just a big party at a Mexican restaurant. They they closed out the Mexican restaurant just for his you know his party for the night. They had a cardboard cutout of him like at the entrance, so everybody could get their photo made <laughs> with with him. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, funerals are one hell of a party. I I'll be partying at my funeral. I know for sure, but. I wish people would be more, um, be more 
in a sense of excited for their departed. I think people are very upset, and it it crushes my heart when I have some people come up to me and be like, can you you talk to my aunt for me, or can you talk to my uncle, or, you know, my mom for me, or my my husband or wife, and it's like, God, I wish I could see them, but I, I mean, I can't see these people who have moved on. Blaine, on the other hand, I'm assuming I'm going to start giving everyone to you because you got it under control. <laughs> I do not. Yeah. <laughs> See, the, the fun for me is like I'll be just like going into a mall, and, exactly. I'll, and I'll have a spirit come up and he goes, "Hey, tap that lady on the shoulder for me. That's my wife, so and so." And that happened to me one time, and at uh, uh, it happened to me at a bar for the uh, premiere of of a haunting in Connecticut. We're at the premiere with Carmen Reed, who the story was about her and her family. Well, I'm just sitting there, and I just opened a beer, and we were having fun talking, and this big dude just come up to me, and he just looked down at me, you Joe Devin right there, and did, uh, what did he say, what's his name, it's Josephine, uh, Jebediah is here, and he wants to talk to her. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I ignored him the first time, but he was a big old dude, spirit-wise. He was a big old dude in life. He was a big old spirit, too. So I'm looking about six, seven, six, eight of this big dude. And I'm like, I guess I better say something to him. And I tapped her on the shoulder. I said, ma'am, I hate to bug you, but uh, your husband, so-and-so, wants to talk to you. And she's like, how would you know my husband's name? I said, because he's standing right there. I said, can I describe him for you? He's about six, seven, six, eight, eight. Looks like a sequoia tree. She said, oh, my God. That is my husband. And he said, just let her know that that she knows it's me. And then I start hearing the Sanford and Son theme. He's humming the Sanford and Son theme. <laughs> and I tell the woman, and her face just got, just her eyes got as wide as saucers. She goes, oh, my God, that was his favorite show. She said, there's no way you could have known. That was that. I said, not at all, and not until your your big old husband told me. Big tree trunk. That's my thing. Well, that's the fun ones I get. That is actually so cool. Damn. God. But like, like most people don't know, is I can't just call any spirit. I see a lot of them. But, you know, yeah. I, I can't just go in there and, and get your aunt, uh, your aunt Katie to come out and play. Now, if Aunt Katie wants to come out and play, yeah, she'll come out and play and talk. If she don't want to, I can't make her. Yep, exactly. You wouldn't understand that. But if somebody is around, like earlier in the chat, um, Wendy was asking about one of her Irish woman about the 1830s named Clara. That is her spirit guide. And she was very, very strong to me. And I, it's one of the things I'm able to do. I can pick up other people's guides without even meeting them. Because yeah, because they're always there. That they like to come show themselves to me. Hey, I am so and so's guy. Okay, I am so and so's guy. Okay, I'll tell them. That's what I do. <laughs> See now, and I want to touch on this really quick because I, like I said earlier, and I don't think people really quite understand where I'm trying to get at. And I want to know, Kim, what you feel about this too. My biggest thing with the paranormal community right now is all these people. I'm so shocked how many people are so interested now in the paranormal community. It's thriving right now. It's actually, it's a good thing, but it can be kind of a bad thing in my eyes. Because I hear all these people having, wanting all this evidence of people and these spirits or ghosts and all this stuff. All these shows that are being created and like Teresa Caputo, for instance, like all these different people. And I want to know why on earth is there not a show where people get to see the process of what you do when you encounter a dead person 
and what you're supposed to say and what you're supposed to do afterwards. I like how we're getting all this proof and all this evidence and getting everyone all excited, but like I said earlier, we're not helping them. I want to help them because for me, I wish people could see this. I Blaine, maybe you'd be able to see it if you were in front of me. When I see a dead person and I help them move on, it's almost like I'm levitating them. I'm getting them the hell out of here because I feel like they have like a ball and chain yeah. on their foot and they're stuck on this spiritual plane that they're in. And, and one of the things that you will learn as you get wiser in this, and when you get the upgrades, and I wanted to do the same thing you're doing now. I wanted to cross every spirit I ever saw. But actually, when you get a little bit more wiser in this and you get like I said, you get your next step ups or your upgrades, you will learn that there are certain spirits that it's not their time to be crossed. But you will sure as hell know when it's their time because the spirit guy will almost scream at you, It's their time now. And they don't give you no choice. Whether they want to leave or not, they're going at that exact moment. But you will learn that there are some that are left here and they are here for a reason. They have some un- finished business they have to take care of or they're around to observe uh, and learn stuff that they didn't learn while they were on this earth and in this plane but you will learn and you will get that gift very soon you will know when it's their time for them to cross and when it's time to leave them alone and let them do what they have to do but do you feel like some of these people that go on these shows, you know, like my so-called crush, Zach Baggins, <laughs> do you feel like some of these people that they're dealing with on the other side do need to go away now? Like, it's time for them to move on? Like, I don't, I just, my heart aches for these people because I just, I see that they suffer and I see when they're upset and it's just like, God, I wish I could just you know, put you in a little bird cage and just love you forever, make sure nobody hurts you anymore because it hurts my heart. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. If you look at the way that a lot of those shows do just for ratings, they go in there and they do a lot of provoking. Okay? You do it to a human being. You come into my house and come in there screaming and yelling at me, either <laughs> two things are going to happen to you. You're going to get your ass kicked or I'm going to shoot you. One of the two. <laughs> and the spirits are the same way. You come in there acting... Oh, and I keep telling people and telling people, the best way to get spirits to communicate with you is talk to them like they were a human being. Treat them with respect. And you can ask Kim, we never provoke in any of our investigations, and we get some kick-ass evidence. Yep, that's we so awesome. Sometimes you can, like, you know, just being, being more positive, you can get more responses. But Amber... Before we have to go, um, why don't you tell people how to get in touch with you if, in case they have questions or need help with our kids? Okay, definitely. Um, I, like I said, I'm kind of new with all this stuff right now, but I'm on Twitter. That's where Kim found me. I'm on paranormandy.com. I'll put that in the chat feed if you all want to find it. Uh, I also have a website called, you know, paranormandy.com slash blogspot, and that's where I get a lot of my um, customers and people that want to ask questions from me. Uh, that's all I have right now. I don't have a Facebook because I don't believe in Facebook. I saw it so bad of me, but I just don't like it. Um, and my email, if you ever need to get my email or my touch face with me, please just, uh, message me on Twitter and I will get in touch with you as soon as I can because I love to help people and it's like my passion. And also a question for you, Blaine and Kim. I am moving to Tennessee in August and I want to know Oh, that's anywhere close to you guys because I would love to further work with y'all. It's yes, been a pleasure sure. to on here. What part of Tennessee are you moving to? Knoxville, baby. Oh, you going to that ugly god for a second place? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in Alabama. I'm sorry, you're talking to an Alabama grad, and I hate arts. I hate it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> did, did I make that clear? <laughs> no, you're not far. You're uh, not far at all from us. But. Amber, if you stay on the line with us after we're off, we'd love to talk to you afterwards and thank you personally for being on the show. And you've been a great guest. And guys, thank thanks. Another episode of the Scare Show is done. See you guys next week. I think we have Rick Wade with us next week. See you guys. Peace, love.